The indictment is under seal, so the government cannot comment on exactly what those seven charges are. Trump says that he has been summoned to appear at the federal courthouse in Miami on Tuesday at 3 p.m. Joining us now to share more on what this means for Trump and his candidacy in the 2024 election is legal analyst Dan Eaton. Dan, good morning. Great to see you. Good morning, Jason. Good to be with you. All kinds of legal wrangling here. What can you tell us? Well, first of all, of course, this is not the second time he has been indicted on federal charges. It's actually the first time in history a president has been indicted on federal charges. The other charges were state charges in New York related to the hush money payments, and he faces trial for that in March. We don't really know specifically what the charges are because they are under seal. However, the New York Times has reported on some of them, and uh, one of the ones, the one that's getting the most attention, is a charge under the uh, Espionage Act uh, for an unauthorized retention of national security documents. Now, understand that each one of those documents, and the prosecutors don't have to prove that they were classified, only that they were intentionally withheld and were important to the United States or its disclosure could be harmful uh, uh, to the United States or helpful to a foreign adversary. Disclosure of each one of those documents carries with it a potential sentence of 10 years in prison. These are very, very serious charges uh, that he's facing, according to a report. But we'll know more on Tuesday when uh, President Trump is arraigned. Dan, is a, is a former president allowed to declassify documents post-presidency? Well, that's a very good question. It's certainly one he, uh, he's intention he's going to make. There is a declassification uh, process that's generally put in place, even when presidents themselves have the right uh, to declassify documents, they generally have this independent uh, committee review uh, the potential uh, declassification of documents. Uh, but President Trump, anyway, is claiming that he has a unilateral authority at any time to declassify documents. That's going to have to be tested uh, in court. It's not clear that his power to declassify goes as far as President Trump says that it does. What do you say to, to, to people who will point out that, wait, didn't they also find classified documents in Joe Biden's garage? What's the difference between that and this? The distinction is the withholding of the documents after they have been specifically requested mm -hmm. by the National Archives or federal or prosecutors. President Biden and uh, Vice President uh, Mike uh, Pence voluntarily turned over the documents uh, when uh, they realized or they were found to uh, have these documents. Uh, the argument here is that President Trump has willfully withheld or caused other to lie about the existence of uh, classified documents that he continued to have in his possession and in that way uh, intentionally violated the Espionage Act, obstructed investigation, caused others to make misrepresentations to federal officials. Of course, he didn't specifically make any representation to federal officials. And that's going to be what the cavalcade of charges focuses on, this willful withholding of documents after they have been uh, requested, Jason. Okay. Even if they had been declassified? Yes. Yes. Because uh, the classification is not a, a, an element of each one of the charges, at mm -hmm. least each one of the reported charges. The Espionage Act does not require that the documents uh, be uh, classified or secret compartmented information, which is a uh, a high level of classification. It's only important that they be uh, secret with respect to the uh, United States and, and that uh, their disclosure could be harmful to the United States or helpful to a foreign adversary. But these specific elements are going to have to be parsed. And understand there's a long cry between an indictment, which only requires a majority of members of the grand jury to believe there's probable cause to believe crime has been committed, to a conviction, which requires, of course, a unanimous verdict of a federal jury on charges beyond a reasonable doubt. And the prosecutor is going to have a tough road. There isn't going to be a plea bargain in this case, for sure. OK, what can we expect on Tuesday? Is this just a, a quick, a, a quick, I mean, in court? Is this just a quick yes, it, one of those hearings? You're in, you're out. You're going it's going to be fairly quick. But here's one thing I can say with certitude. Uh, Donald Trump is going to plead not guilty. Newsflash. Uh, there, there's not going to be any surprise there. The surprises are going to come in the twists and turns in the months ahead as we lead up to trial. And understand that he's already facing trial in New York under state charges with regard to the hush money payments. And that trial is set for next March, right in the middle of primary season.
Good point. All right, Dan Eaton, our legal analyst. Appreciate it, Dan. All right, good to be with you, Jason. Have a good day. You too.